Um, I have two main purposes for today, two main purposes. The first main purpose, right, is I want all of you to get your record number of recommendations on one appointment within the next two weeks. So now I'll write that down. I want you to get your record number of recommendations on one appointment within the next two weeks. And my second objective is for you to get the most leads you've ever gotten in the next two weeks. Most leads within a two-week period. Okay, guys, did you hear all that stuff that Leah just talked about? That was excellent stuff. Just over $1.6 million in sales. All that training you just learned, we need people to see. We need people to show the product to do that with, right? So I've found in my career that recommendations, leads, are the most important aspect of your business. This is the most important aspect of business. This is the most important aspect of these next two weeks you're about to go into. So I'd like to start off with a quote here. Okay, um, It's by Napoleon Hill. He's a great author. You guys should pick up some of his books, like Think and Grow Rich. I know Ricky has on my team. He takes books out of my library, right? All of your district managers have books. You should take them and read them. So he, uh, he says, patience, persistence, and perspiration make an unbeatable combination for success. Patience, persistence, and perspiration make an unbeatable combination for success. And the reason I chose that quote is because you need all three of those things when you're getting those leads, those recommendations, right? It comes down to persistence, patience, right? And getting those leads and those recommendations. So um, to get us started off, let's talk about um, building your leads. Recommendations are the fuel for your push. They are the fuel for your push period. I want you to imagine you have a little car, right? Did you see Crystal up on stage? You see Crystal up on stage the last few minutes, right? Her fuel in her car was always full. She would get 10 to 20 recommendations on every single appointment. She would tell me. Now, the sales were great, but at the end of every single conversation, she would tell me how many recommendations she got. And that was just as important to her. Right, Crystal? Yeah, she's sitting right there. So that's what fueled her six over $6,000 fast start. She wanted the record in Whittier history. It was recommendations that provided that fuel. Imagine you have a vehicle, right? We're going on a road trip to Vegas. Let's keep that thing full. Keep it full at all times. It's recommendations that's going to do it. The number of recommendations will be a great determinant of the number of appointments you complete during this upcoming push period. The number of recommendations you get will be a great determinant on the number of appointments you complete in this upcoming push period. Okay? Recommendations are the key, leads are the key. And I'm gonna show you how to do that today. I'm gonna give you a few tips, some things that really helped me do my $10,000 push while being a sales manager in my office in Huntington. Okay, that's where I'm from. All right, so new experience. Let's talk about what leads can do for you. You have control of where and who you wanna do demos with. Did you guys know that? You have control of where and who you wanna do demos with? One-on-one -on -one time with professionals in the field you are interested in, right guys? I remember when I first started out in Cutco, my big thing, I wanted to be an accountant. That was my thing. When I went to UC Irvine, business econ, my major was like accounting and management. I wanted to be an accountant. So guess who I asked to see after every single demo? Hey, Ms. Jones, do you know any accountants? Hey, do the first people I showed Cutco do, they know any accountants? No, they had no clue, right? But as I started doing more demos, I found one person who had an accountant, right? One person. And that led me to more, that led me to more, then that led me to business professionals. So whatever you want to do, if you want to be a doctor, right? Ask for doctors. Ask if you want to own your own business, meet CFOs. Would it be cool to meet CFOs? How about this? Would it be cool to go to an area called Pelican Ridge? That's where Kobe Bryant lives. Did you guys know that? Newport Coast, Pelican Ridge. Any you guys know that down in Mission Viejo? That area, it's like that hill behind the hill, right? Yeah. How did I get there, guys? Leads and recommendations and asking for it. My big key on this is you got to learn how to ask for it. You should ask for these things, right? How did I meet the lady in Pelican Ridge who owned 37 car dealerships? Do you think it's cool to actually learn from them too? I asked her, how did you and your husband do this? She's like, well, David, we started when we were young. We worked really hard. A lot of people always wondered why we work so hard, why we're so loyal to what we're doing. We had a lot of different opportunities, but we stayed loyal to one opportunity. We worked really hard. Oh, that was really good advice. Now, did I sell $1,000 with Cutco? Yeah, but was the advice I got even more valuable? Was going into that community and showing me a lifestyle I could achieve even more valuable than selling Cutco? These are things that recommendations and leads give to you. 
right? You get a chance to see how other people's lifestyle, get to other communities, right? Whatever area you're in, whatever city you're in, there's a great community. There's great people you can learn from. And I want you to learn from these people by getting leads and recommendations, right? Don't think that immediate circle, right? Don't think that immediate circle. That's how you get out of that, leads and recommendations, okay? So this push, upcoming, oh, I keep doing right there. Your income is going to be determined by your push. I show my group. I forgot. I didn't bring my, my recommendation, my leads notebook. But I show my team. There's two, two different people, right? I remember them, the Hinnitts and Courtney Meredith. Now, Lori and Blake Hinnitt, right? They were HM3s, club soccer, everything. They didn't buy one piece of Cutco from me. I <sighs> know. They didn't buy one piece of Cutco from me, right? But Lori and Blake Hinnett gave me 20 recommendations. 20 recommendations, right? From that list, I sold $6,000 worth of Cutco, right? From that list. I was at 50%. So, how much income did I make? Three grand from that appointment. From that appointment, but I didn't sell anything. Where did all my income come from? The leads I got, the leads I got from that appointment, right? So the leads you get in these next two weeks will be the determinant factor of your income, right? We taught this in basic training, $17 per yes. That's at 10%. Anybody above 10% in this room? Yeah, thought so. Okay? So double that, triple that, right? All those things. Let's talk about this push period. Here's how your push period breaks down when you're represented. Ready? First thing we got to do, what are we going to do tonight, starting tonight? Or some you started yesterday. What did you guys do yesterday and yesterday night? Phone calls, right? We made some phone calls. That leads to appointments, which leads to sales, demos and sales, right? But then after we see all these people, what do we need? Recommendations. That's the most important. None of those other two things happen unless we have leads. None of those other two things happen unless we have leads. We can't make phone calls. We can't do the demos unless we have leads. This is the most important aspect of your push period. How did I do a $10,000 push? On three separate occasions within the push, I got my record number of recommendations. So remember my first objective of today is for you guys to get your record number of recommendations in these next two weeks. Let's talk about how to do this. The first key, okay, the first key to building your lead bank for this SC1 push, guys. These push periods are awesome. This is where you can grow. This is where you can advance. This is where you're going to make the most income you've ever made as a representative, right? Be on purpose. Now, what does that mean to be on purpose? Follow page 18 word for word. Follow page 18 word for word. We've all been taught that, right? But when you start doing it on purpose, when you start doing it on purpose, that's what makes the difference. Instead of just saying the words, you actually have the music behind the words. You say it on purpose. Mr. and Mrs. Jones, one more very important part. This is actually where you can really help me out. You know those goals I was talking about? This is where you can really help me out. I get paid each time I show Cutco, but I can only show it to people I've been personally recommended to. So what most people like to do while I'm cleaning up is quickly jot down 10 to 20 people who might be nice enough to take a look at Cutco. Now, I'm not necessarily looking for anyone who wants to take a look, just someone as nice as Chris Linko, right, that I can show Cutco to. So here's my recommendation notebook. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, right? Every recommendation really helps. Oh, by the way, you guys have the sponsorship thing, right? Once you have the sponsorship thing, we didn't even have that when I was representative. Use that sponsorship. If you write down 10 today, you become a single point sponsor. If you write down 20, you become a double point sponsor. It's $250 worth that helps you pay for school. Use that sponsorship. So you start saying it with purpose, with purpose and meaning. Make your notebook on purpose. How many of you guys actually show up into the appointment with the notebook with numbers on it? Yeah, right? You got to do it, right? Make that on purpose. Now, here's another way you can make your notebook on purpose. You might be like I was when I was a brand new representative. There wasn't very many names in my notebook. All right, there wasn't very many names in my notebook. So you know what I did? I filled up my notebook. I filled it up with friends, filled it up with families. So when I go to appointment, I'd show Mrs. Jones, there was 10 to 20 recommendations on every single page. Did that give her confidence? Yeah, that's called social proofing, right? All those people were recommended to me by friends and family. I just filled them in. So if you have pages and pages, I would say fill up three to four pages of 10 to 20 people and watch what happens. Right? Watch what happens. Okay? Plant seeds throughout the demo. This is a big one, guys. I want you to go into your appointments on the purpose of getting recommendations. So at the beginning of the appointment, you can say something like this Mrs. to Mrs. Jones. Mrs. Jones, my goal for SC1 push is $5,000. My goal is not for you to buy all $5,000, but for you to like me enough to recommend me to all your friends. 
All right? My goal is not necessarily for you to buy all $5,000, Mrs. Jones, but it's for you to recommend me to all my friends, all your friends, right? So huge, right at the beginning of the demo, right? Then when you talk about on page one of the DSA, do you guys know we're a part of the DSA? Do you guys know what that means? Direct Selling Association, do you know that that means that we can't go door to door or cold calling or anything like that? So when you're talking about the DSA, that's where you can go, Mrs. Jones, you point to it in your blue book, you go, we're part of the DSA, that means I can only get personally recommended to my future customers. Right? Are you saying that? Are you remembering? I remember knowing that and then actually saying it were two different things right? as a representative. And have a goal in mind before you go on to your appointment. Just like your sales, guys, you have these goals, right? We write out our goals for our two-week period. Oh, I need to make this many sales in quarter one. I need to make this many sales in quarter two. You should have a goal for number of recommendations, right? Number of recommendations. You should have a goal before you go to an appointment. I guarantee you, your mindset, when you start changing that mindset and making that goals, you'll see your results increase. Huge, guys, right? I've been a professional athlete, right? The biggest thing I learned was mental. I could do everything physically. I was okay. I wasn't that fast, but my mental was what really challenged me, right? So your mindset on that, okay? Recommendation goal page. You guys should all make a recommendation goal page for SC1 push. So you should have your sales goal page, you should have your recommendation goal page. My sales manager, Vivian Kosas, really good at closing sales. She's at $50,000 in career sales. She got to FSM in like six months. She has an average order of $500. Guess what, she wasn't the best at though. Recommendations and so the biggest thing we did for her SC2 push was we had her make a goal sheet of recommendations. Her goal is to get 200 recommendations. During that SC2 push, one lady wrote down 42 names for her. Got her $6,000 of her SC2 push, that was over 10K. Do you think that goal page helped her out? Yeah. What's my goal for you guys? Get your record number of recommendations. All right, let's talk about how to get your record. First thing you gotta do is you gotta expect it. A big key to a push period is to expect your record. You have to expect it. Some of you are seeing that right now. Oh, I don't know how to get 20. I don't know how to get 20. You gotta expect your record on every single appointment. Here's how to do it. First thing, ask for your record of, of every single demo. Ask for your record of leads. Do all of you know your record? You should look back and know, oh, okay, it's 10. Okay, it's 12. I remember mine being seven. My parents wrote down seven people. I didn't even know that they knew seven people. I was shocked myself. I was like, you guys know seven people? Yes. That's awesome, all right? So what's your record? And start expecting it. So here's how you share it. Mrs. Jones, my record is blank, right? Mrs. Joel, Ms. Jones, my record is blank. How can we hit this together? Do you have a cell phone, address book, rosters, or directory that we can get out? Mrs. Jones, my record is blank. How can we hit this together? I make it a team thing. I always have done that with my customers. Ms. Jones, my record, we gotta hit this goal together. And you get passionate about it. Ms. Jones, my record, uh, sales, that's okay. Thanks for buying cuckoo. But the recommendations, that's where it's at. How can we hit this together? So what you guys are starting to notice is all my energy just on the sale? No, it's after I even get more energized about the recommendations. That's my badge of courage. I love to tell my manager about that. Okay? Can you invoke competition? A lot of you guys are competitive, right? You guys are in this room because a lot of you are have a little bit of competitive like, guts, right? Got a little competitive juices that are flowing in you. Did you know that Mrs. Jones still is competitive? Did you guys know that? Aren't you parents? Do you guys have some parents that are still kind of competitive? Right? They play like the fantasy football or they pay those things like that, right? So Mrs. Jones is still competitive. So when you talk about her friend, this is also how Vivian got her record number of recommendations. You need to invoke competition. Mrs. Jones, I was just over at Susie's house. She got 12. Can you beat her? You will be shocked. You guys are saying right now, you'll be shocked at how many people will actually be excited about that. It's amazing, right? That's how I got my record of 37 recommendations, right? From the McKinley's soccer like parents, right? They just wrote down everyone in Fountain Valley. Wrote down like everyone they knew in Fountain Valley, right? Because their friend wrote down 12. And they're like, oh, my record's 25, right? Can you beat them? It's wrote down to everyone. And that started my SC2 10K push, right? I went into SC2, my 10K push, a couple summers back, right? Three summers back with only 20 people to see. I had a list. You guys ever heard of those hit lists? Have you ever been told by our manager to make a hit list, right? And I had a hit list of 20 people. And I was like, how am I going to do this? And it was leads that got me there. It was the number, invoking competition, getting my record. Here's the last key, guys. It's going to help you out. 
Show them your notebook. You guys got to show them your notebook. We talked about that, but here's the last key. It's called piggyback, okay? Now, you might have been taught this, but you might have never used it, okay? It's called piggybacking appointments. This is how you turn average days into amazing days. This is how you turn average days into amazing days is piggybacking. Any of you guys ever had like those two demo days where you have like one demo in the morning and then you have like a demo at night? And you're like, oh man, I'll just go like eat some food or something or go do that, right? Well, here's what you should do during a push period. Push is designed to challenge yourself, right? To the greatest of your ability. So the first way they can do it is they actually call up their customer. So I'll tell you about, did, you guys have these online demos, right? Well, back then when I was doing Cutco, old dinosaur David, right? They didn't have online demos. You know, we had to actually drive to go show them Cutco. So I went to a place called Barstow. Have you guys ever heard of that? Yeah, that's cool. It's like, you're right by Vegas. I'm like, I might as well just go, right? So I go to Barstow. I have four appointments set up for the day. Saturday, I'm ready to rock. These are like good people. They have like some disposable income. This house is out there pretty cheap, right? I'm like ready to go, right? As I'm driving up, you guys know the story of what's about to happen. I get the first phone call, right? Oh, hey, David, um, our aunt, you know, something happened in the hospital. We got oh, to reschedule. Awesome, right? Second one, text message. Oh, David, right? We got to reschedule. I'm left with one guy, right? My first guy I saw. My first guy I saw, right? So I see my first guy, and they already had Cutco. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Her, his wife was a representative, so she had the set that he purchased when we used to have to purchase it. And so I do the demo. They buy like $200 of Cutco from me, and I'm out in Barstow. I have two decisions to make, right? Don't I have a team? Don't I want to be a leader on my team? Don't I want to represent, right? Don't I want to go for this 10K push? All right, man. So I, what I do, I shared my goals. I'm like, his name is John. I'm like, John. And by the way, he's a really nice guy, right? He was trying to help me out um, like spiritually and things like this. I'm like, John, I need to see someone right now. Who do you have? I'm like, John, you got to call someone up. Who's the first person you think of? He's like, okay, I'll call Ed. I'm like, a guy, all right. He goes, Ed's a single dad, Dave. Awesome, this is getting better, right? So he calls up Ed, right? He calls up Ed and he goes, Ed, this kid's got some goals. He's really going for it. You got to see him today. You got to see him today. And I'm like, and he's like, what time will work for you? I'm like, whenever he wants. He's telling like 1.30 or something, right? And so he calls up. He's like, Ed, he's got to meet you at 1.30. He's going to be over there. Ed's like, okay, me and my sons are going out to a movie. So he's got to be here by, by 1.30. I'm like, all right, I'm over there. So I go over to Ed, not the best neighborhood. Brand new, like real estate, you know, they haven't made the sidewalks or anything like that, right? They still have houses that are unfinished on the street, right? I'm like, awesome, right? So we go in. I'm going into Ed. He's got a family of three, right? Ed's this guy. He's partially disabled, doesn't do any cooking. I'm like, oh, this is getting awesome. But one of his sons cooks, right? So we bring the son in. Long story short, Studio Plus Four bought the shares as well. So I turn a $200 day into almost a grand day. So who's going to have that story? And all starts with piggybacking, right? Piggybacking, never giving up. These are the challenges they overcome. Next one, text message. Guys, this revolutionized my business. This revolutionized my business was having my customers text message. I'll never forget a lady in Brea, right? A lady in Brea, um, she was an RN. She was the first customer I ever had text message her friends. And before I left the demo, I had five yeses. So I was in a push period, right? And I'd never done this yes thing. And before I left the demo, I got five yeses because I was cleaning up. She's like, oh yeah, Susie want it. Oh yeah, Jocelyn want it. Oh yeah, it was all my friends from um, Chapman. What's that school, Chapman University? It was like their entire staff from over there, right? And I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. So what I do, I got in my truck after a demo and what I do? Called all five of them, set up four appointments right in the next two days. That's how you do a push period. You guys see that? So text message, here's the last one. What do we have nowadays? Social media, can they go on and just send out a Facebook message? Wouldn't that be cool? They go on their computer, doesn't everyone have like tablets these days? It's crazy. My parents have that stuff, they don't know how to use that stuff. I walk in, my mom's like on a tablet, right? So they have all the stuff, my mom has a Facebook. If my mom has a Facebook, your customer has a Facebook. You guys get that? If my mom has a Facebook, your customer has a Facebook, right? I think she has more friends than me too. Okay, so my point is, are we using all of our materials possible? I was a representative who wanted it so bad, I wanted to use every possible material I could. We're in the social media age nowadays, right? So use it. So, Mrs. Jones, here's how you do it. Here's the phrase you use. Mrs. Jones, as you know, I'm in this huge competition right now. Here's the phrase that you use. I'm showing you how I did it. Mrs. Jones, I'm in this huge competition right now. And I'm trying to hit my goal of, that's where you insert your goal, 
is there anyone that I can see right now? I have an opening. You know what the cool thing, you know what you do, guys? The cool thing is you show them your schedule. Any of you guys that have a planner or schedule? I remember showing Mrs. Jones my schedule of demos. What does that show her? How hard you're working, how hard you want it. That gives them the incentive to go, oh, I'm going to call up Suze this, but I'll show them all this. You guys see that? So you show them your schedule. Ms. Jones, as you know, I'm in this huge competition right now, and I'm trying to get as many appointments as I can. Is there anybody you can see right now? And I almost dare you guys to try that on your next few appointments in SC1. Now, I remember being the representative. There's a lot more knowing how to do it than there's actually doing it. I know a lot of you are going to do it, and we're going to kick ass this SC1. So, guys, I'm going to leave you with this quote. Okay? Leave this quote. You can get it from a friend. They got it. Good business leaders create a vision, articulate the vision, and passionately own the vision, and relentlessly drive it into completion. Guys, the vision of this division is to be a national championship division, and we're going to do it with the people in this room. It starts with SC1 Push, which is tomorrow afternoon. I'm so proud of all of you guys, so honored to be in this division. I can't wait to see us uphold the Silver Cup. Great job, guys. Let's do it more.